DJ uses an iPhone 11 to film. Jack's got a Huawei P40. Which one is best for filming? Drone and foam goes head to head. We've used phones to film since the start of Drone and Phone and along the way seen a lot of improvements to the camera specs. In this review we're talking about our current phone choices and why we like to use them. So when I'm out shooting Drone and Phone the main camera that I'm using is at the moment the iPhone 11 Plus. This has three lenses on it, a wide lens, a standard lens and a two times telephoto. It doesn't have the long reach as we have in some other mobile phones, including the P40. But for me, this is all I need for most of the things that I do. The quality of the image is superb. Well, I have been using this new Huawei P40. This is a new toy for me. Just like the iPhone, it has three cameras at the back, but it has a Leica lens. You, if you saw my last episode, you know how much I like the Leica lens. However, it has a better optical lens three times, slightly better than the iPhone but we need to test how well they perform. For this test we mounted our cameras on a cage side by side to compare. So I can see immediately here that the iPhone is wider uh, than the Huawei, um, but in terms of the image, well I can't tell much between them at this stage. The wide lens of the iPhone 11 Pro is equivalent to 13 millimeters on a DSLR full frame camera as compared to the P40, which sports an 18mm DSLR equivalent lens. Not as wide, but still very usable for the times you are close to the action. The one-timed lenses are very similar, 26mm on the iPhone and 27mm on the P40. But it is at the telephoto end that we see the biggest difference, with the Huawei outgunning the iPhone with a 125mm optical lens as compared to just 52mm on the iPhone. Both have digital zooms at the top of the optical ones. For comparison, here are both at six times, or around 150mm. As we are not great fans of carrying heavy tripods on our adventures, having good stabilisation is crucial. So our first test is just to hold the cameras steady and zoom in to see how well the inbuilt stabilisation works. Next, it's time to move with the cameras. OK, so here I'm testing the stabilisation as I'm doing a walk and talk. This is something that we do quite a lot on drone and phone. We'll walk carrying the cameras and talk at the same time. Good thing is here is Jack is having to walk backwards, which means I'm hoping he's going to fall in the water. It should make a great shot. And finally, it's time for the running shot. This really pushes the stabilisation to its limits. Both the iPhone and the Huawei P40 can be connected with external microphones in windy conditions for better sound quality. But for this test we're just testing the internal microphones, as 90% of the time this is all we would use. So I'm talking in a busy harbour right now and I'm checking the audio quality of these two phones. This is something of course we do a lot of in drone and phone. We're often talking to the cameras as we go, as we walk, or standing still at the beginning at the end of every episode for sure, but also during it. Um, we don't have any external microphones attached to these, we're just using them with the bare microphones in the way that we would shoot with drone and phone. So which has the best audio? Well, you decide. If you watch drone and phone you'll know we love our slow-mo and time lapses, so any phone we choose has to perform well in these tasks. On the day we went out we attempted a slow-mo of the water against the pier and time lapse of the sunset, but both failed to impress. So I took the cameras back out the next day for some more dramatic video. For the final test we wanted to look at the camera's low light capability, again a must for any drone and phone main camera. 
Here we went with the 1x cameras to keep the playing field level. Both have very wide apertures for their size and claim excellent night photography. Well, back to the studio, Jack. We're going to find out which one is better. I'm pretty sure the iPhone's got it. This is stand side by side with two cameras. I know which one's better. <laughs> Go and have a look. Well, we've just been through all of the footage, Jack, and it was pretty surprising that they were very similar in lots of ways. But let's go through them one by one. The most difference happened actually in the first test when we went through the lens test, the wide, medium and tight. The first thing that I noticed was the color balance of the Huawei was pretty well off for this one. <laughs> and I saw the first thing you noticed, uh, the, the iPhone camera is much wider. Well, the, the iPhone <laughs> ca camera does go slightly wider, but it, we had this green tint on most of the Huawei footage, which was uh, a bit of a shame, but that might have just been the situation we were in, but the iPhone dealt with that better. But what was most surprising was when we went to the long end, when we did the zooming in, where we thought the Huawei would outdo the iPhone with a five times optical lens, but actually using the digital equivalent on the iPhone, it matched it almost perfectly. Yeah, you don't see optical or not, it's just performed well. Yeah, and I, and I was very pleased to see how good the iPhone footage looked fully out digitally zoomed on this screen because I was expecting it to be really mushy. But then on the next test, when we went to the stabilization, um, it went back to pretty well equal, right? Yeah, yeah, head to head, yeah. <laughs> that we did everything we, we do during uh, the strong phone shooting, side, front, back, following, all kinds of jumping movement. Yeah. It was quite good. And the thing that I was most impressed at was when I was trying to film that fisherman uh, at full zoom, just handheld, how steady was that? I mean, it yeah. was really remarkable. And that's the thing we worry most. When we put these small cameras in our hands with long lenses, that we find that it's very hard to keep them stable. But this in-house built-in stabilization worked perfectly. The voice test, well, that was one for Huawei to win, right? Yeah, it's just stand out, your voice, yeah, stand out. So what the Huawei does is it isolates the voice. The background noise almost completely disappeared. It isn't the most natural of sound. The iPhone does have a, a more natural sound because it includes the background uh, more, but in the same point that if you were in a busy environment you'd really want the Huawei yeah, to yeah. isolate that voice and take out all the background sound. You're definitely going to hear. And it wasn't weird. Sometimes when you do that, when you just isolate the voice, the voice all goes strange but it actually came out very natural which was good. So that's one up for the Huawei. The next test was re-timing. So what we're doing here is doing time lapses and doing slow motion which are things that we do on pretty well every episode <laughs> of Drone and Phone. So we wanted to put that in. Um, and this again was pretty well equal, would you say? Uh, well, to, to my like, I think they both perform very well with slow motion, equally, but you think the Huawei yeah, did a little bit better? I thought Huawei slightly got it on the slow mo, and I thought the iPhone got it on the time lapse, and you thought the opposite. So I would exactly. say we call it an exact, <laughs> an exact type. Finally, when we went into the low light, this is something I thought the iPhone would really score highly on this because they make a lot about their low light capability. But in fact, it was a Huawei that came on top. Yeah, the sensor, I think, the beauty in the sensor was something really uh, I good. I think it's all, the, all the, the magic sauce they put in the, in the digital side. But what we found was the grain that was very noticeable on the big screen had completely disappeared. <laughs> yeah. When the had... night comes, all gone. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty natural. So. All in all, I would say it was a, a pretty well fair fight. I don't think there's an absolute winner. It all depends on what's most important to you. But certainly for drone and phone, I would say both cameras are just fine. OK, Jack, so in the next episode, we're going to be doing what? Oh, next one is going to be really interesting. Yeah? We're going to show off a little bit of our storage, the whole inventory of drones. Of all the drones we have on drone and phone. And uh, we're going to pick two okay. to compare. So hopefully I'm going to have the, the, the Mavic Mini, which is my favorite drone at the moment. And uh, no doubt you'll be with your... I will go for the Mavic 2. Well, I, I think that is going to be an interesting test. Um, that's going to be on next week. For now, that's all we've got time for. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe wherever you see this. Jack, it's time to go. Bye-bye. You decide.
You see, I have to hold him to work, yeah? This is the most important job to hold him still, not to fall into uh, the, the water. Point.